I would say that um, this thing, it provides a new, you know, a new opportunity. Uh, I would say people can give it an opportunity, give it a chance, mm -hmm. give it the necessary support that it, it, it needs. Maybe it is an opportunity for the country to turn its, 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 its circumstances around and people can look uh, and you know people have really really suffered in the past 20 30 years or since 1980 mm -hmm. if i were to put it, me and you know better since 1980 mm -hmm. people have had have been going through hell therefore it could be a turning point in their monetary history we and, uh, welcome you all on material and broadcasting corporation my name is tulaninka this is the big conversation uh, program today we have mr Paul uh, the Zimbabwean government has introduced a new currency called a, a Zim gold. Yeah. In short, it is called Z. Today, we dedicated this session uh, to assessing and analyzing the new currency. We bring to you a financial expert uh, who will help us understand the implications of the new currency. Uh, Mr. Politijov is a currency expert, an award-winning economist and central banker, and author of over a dozen uh, books in finance and economics. He is the originator and developer of the Njov Currency Confidence Index. Uh, in short, it's called NCX Index. Currently, he is a lead consultant uh, on monetary policy and the current issues for various countries in Africa. Mr. Njov, we welcome you on Material Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nkala. Thank you to your listener. OK, um, as I have just uh, said uh, that today, we will be analyzing uh, all the implications of the uh, new currency which has been introduced in Zimbabwe. But before that, I think in order for people to understand or to understand it better, let us take a historical uh, journey. Could you please give us a brief history of money in Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kala. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the issue of money has been problematic, not only for, uh, for Zimbabwe, but for Africa as a whole in general. Now, if we were to zero in on the question of money, the history of money in Zimbabwe, when I was coming to prepare for this interview, I told a friend of mine, and I said, I'm going to be talking about the history of money. Uh, this friend of mine happens to be a, a spent thrift kind of a guy. So he said to me, Mr. Love, I know the history of money. And I asked him, what is it? He said, as soon as it reaches me, it's history. <laughs> uh, that is how we define the history of money. But anyway, <laughs> we'll look at it in, much, in a much more better context than that uh, simplified version. Um, if we look at the question of money in Zim, let's go back to the colonial era. Mm -hmm. um, specifically during the federation uh, period, 1953 to 1963, uh, Rhodesia, the federation of Rhodesia and Yasserin were using a currency called, um, you know, it was the Central African currency. Um, which was a currency for both the present day Zim, Zambia, and Malawi. Now, that currency was linked to the British pound. In other words, that currency was a British pound in disguise, just like what you have in the South African context where Swaziland, the Sutu, uh, and Namibia, they were their currencies, but those currencies are, as a matter of fact, rent, their rent. That's why the 
the, 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 the exchange rate between them and the range is one to one. Now, the currency of Rhodesia during that time was at par with the British pound. In other words, it was intrinsically linked to the British pound. Now, when um, the Federation ended in 1963, uh, 1965, uh, the then Prime Minister Ian Smith declared the UDI, and with the, the UDI was a unilateral declaration of independence. So among other things that it did was to try and de-link the Rhodesian currency from the British pound, but the markets refused to recognize that um, divorce. She, he tried to divorce the, the Rhodesian currency from the British pound, but the markets refused to, to recognize divorce. So much as they began to call it the Rhodesian dollar, but the market still interpreted it as a British pound. That is why throughout the liberation uh, struggle, the Rhodesian currency was by and large almost equal to the British pound, uh, save uh, my, minor variations between the, the two, but by and large, they were almost at par because the markets recognized the Rhodesian currency as a de facto uh, British pound. So that happened all the way up to 1980. That is why at independence, the, 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 the Rhodesian dollar was still worth more than the US dollar. Kettes of its uh, intrinsic link or its historical link with the pound. And that's how the market viewed it and interpreted it. Now, uh, because the market said Rhodesia was a British pound, therefore um, it, it remained an instrumentality of the British government. That's why the currency was seen as a pound. Now, 1980, switch to, to the same dollar. Um, the same dollar from 1980 all the way up to the 90s, by and large, was fixed to the US dollar, the exchange rate. There was an attempt during the, the economic structural adjustment period um, uh, in the early 90s to try and liberalize the but that process failed because there was no willingness to uh, to liberalize the currency as it were. So by and large, it remained fixed. And then came the 2000s when um, then there was massive, massive excessive printing of the Zim dollar. And then with massive excess, excessive printing, invariably you will have inflation creeping in. So inflation started ratcheting up. It started going up into hyperinflation. Now, we know from uh, monetary economics that uh, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon caused by excessive printing of money. So that's precisely what happened. As the uh, central bank printed more and more Zim dollars, the inflation rate shot up. It peaked at at a huge figure of 89.7 sextillion, sextillion percent hyperinflation. 89.7 sextillion percent, that's 897 plus 21 zeros. <laughs> that's how far the inflation rate went by uh, 2008 at its peak. And then 2009, there was a switch to multi-currency system, which happened in uh, January, by the end of January. So we saw the inflation shooting down from that huge uh, treacherous figure of uh, 89.7 uh, sextillion. It was calculated by an American economist, uh, Professor Steve Hank, um, who calculated it at uh, 89.7 sextillion. Uh, it, it then, because of the the multi-currency system, the onset of the, the US dollar anchored multi-currency system, which was your euro, the pound, the pula, the rand, and the US dollar, among others. We saw the inflation rate shoot down to the neighborhood of 0%. It stayed there for a considerable period of time. I would say almost during the, the, the lifespan of the multi-currency, the inflation rate was very, very low, almost touching 0%. 
up until 2015, 2016, uh, when we saw the introduction of the bond note. The bond note came in at a, a certain uh, uh, exchange rate of one to one uh, to the dollar, and the, the markets began to query the validity of that uh, exchange rate. And then um, the parents, the programs, uh, problems began again. We saw inflation mounting up, and then we saw the attempt to introduce the uh, the gold backed currency uh, and uh, a gold currency, and then leading up to the current situation where we now have a new currency that has just been introduced a few days ago called the ZIC, Zimbabwe a gold uh, currency, as it were. I okay. think I can end, uh, uh, Ms. Ankara. Yeah, um, just just for interest sake, uh, you mentioned that uh, like currencies in countries like uh, Swaziland, Namibia, and Lesotho, they are one to one to Iran. Did I get you correct there? Yes, that's hundred percent correct. Okay, um, so you, because so you were saying that in connection with the Zim dollar, which was almost one to one to a pound, what makes it like uh, these uh, currencies like Lesotho, Namibia? What makes them uh, to be one to one to a pound to a to a run? No, that, there is a a currency arrangement. There is a currency agreement. Uh -huh. The the rent monetary union, the rent monetary union, which brings uh, Swaziland, South Africa, Lesotho, and Namibia uh, into one in terms of the current arrangement. Mm -hmm. So it means all all the uh, three four countries are governed by the same monetary policies, same interest rates, same rules same uh, 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 standards. So in that arrangement, in that currency agreement, therefore you can have a situation where um, the currency is, is, uh, is valued at one to one. So there is an agreement in the, and an arrangement. So you must take it, uh, to, to if you want to simplify it, mm -hmm. all those countries are, are simply using the rent. Oh. The, yeah, to, to, to say there is a, a Lesotho, Maluti, as far as the Emalangen and the Namibian dollar is just to give it a national character, but in, in real terms, they are actually using the rent. That is oh. what they are using. Yeah, Botswana okay. used to be the same basket up to 1980, but in 1980, it decided to go on its own. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Njov, uh, you originated and developed the NCX index. What, what does that index do? And maybe before uh, I come to that, or if you could maybe just briefly tell us what is money and why is money so important? Maybe if you could tackle those two questions at the same time. That's a very good question. Let me start with money. Mm -hmm. Money is what you've always known it to be, money. Mr. Nkana, you, mm. you probably know it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so money is what you've always known it to be. Uh, right. Let me move away from the informal mm. definition, a much more formal one. So money is a medium of exchange and a store of value. Mm -hmm. Money is a medium of exchange and a store of value. So... Uh, and over and above that, money must have something that's a characteristic called intrinsic value. So I'll, I'll go over this. A medium of exchange, it means if we you are selling a, an ox and I've got money, I can use that money to, to buy uh, the ox. Uh, if you want to buy something, you can use money. So it's a medium of exchange mm -hmm. in the sense that you can use it to exchange goods as a medium to exchange goods. That's one. 
to it's a store of value. All the work that you've done since you were 20 up to now, you can store it in the form of money uh, as you prepare for retirement. Uh, you, can, you can put your pension, all your retirement money, in the, uh, your, your, your retirement package in the form of money. So money is a store of value, right? Uh, money is supposed to be interchangeable. It must be exchangeable. It must be convertible. Uh, the markets, which is the consumers, buyers and sellers, must have confidence in the money. So there are many, there is a myriad uh, of, of factors around what constitutes money. Beyond all of that, money must have intrinsic value. In other words, mm -hmm. if you get a currency like gold, gold has intrinsic value in the sense that if you don't want it as money, you can always melt it and convert it into a ring, your wedding ring. You can convert it and use it as a, as a gold tooth. You can do anything, you can do a chain with it. So there is a lot of value attached to it beyond money beyond its characteristics of being money. So money must have intrinsic value. That is the other aspect of, uh, of money. I can go on um, on the technicalities, but the much more important aspect of money as well is the fact that money serves as a, a lubricant that oils the wheels of the economy. Mm -hmm. It's a lubricant that oils the wheels of economy. This is very critical because whenever we talk about money, we bring the question of liquidity. Uh, liquidity is a term that was brought into finance by a British economist called John Maynard Keynes, uh, whose policies influenced uh, the direction of economics a lot. And um, most of the policies that we follow nowadays, they are uh, they they originate from some of his ideas. So. Liquidity and money, think about water. Mm -hmm. uh, John Maynard Keynes would have likened money to water. Water is an essential for life. So the same is money. Money is the essential for business. It's, 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 it's essential for industry, for the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about in biology, we can use a biological analogy. In the human body, blood, is, is a liquid, in liquid form. So your body cannot function without blood, without the, that liquidity, which is blood more flowing. So the same applies to money. Money is, a, a, is the blood of the economy. It is the lubricant that oils the wheels of the economy. I think I've, uh, I've put a lot of emphasis on- it, Yeah, no, no, the last one. Money. No, that's good. Um... Then, if you could go to the second part uh, about the index that you have developed. Thank you very much. The NCX index. Look, one aspect of money is uh, anything can be used as money. You can use a fruit, you can use a paper. Nowadays, we use paper money. You can use gold, you can use anything. Um, you can use any piece of object, a stone as money, so long as the markets or the people have confidence in that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. the, the paper that makes the Zim dollar, the paper that makes the rent, the paper that makes the US dollar are one and the same. They are made from the same material, but people have got more confidence in the US dollar than the rent. People have got more confidence in the rent than the US, than the, than the Zim dollar. So, Whatever object you are using as money, people must have confidence in that object, right? A, a question then arises, Mr. Mm -hmm. What is confidence and how do we measure confidence? So the index that you are referring to seeks to answer that question. The NCX index, which I originated and developed, um, the full name of it is the Global Currency Confidence Index. Uh, abbreviated to NCX index. So it seeks to quantify um, index. So it, it seeks to quantify confidence uh, and make it measurable. 
so that uh, people can determine the level of confidence that is associated with a given currency. So the factors that are built into its computation, we look at the internal value of the currency, that is the, if you look at it from an inflation uh, viewpoint, we look at the external value of the currency, that is its exchange rate, then, so it is a disruption. Yeah, cool. Sorry? Oh, can, I, can I continue? Yeah, 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 yes, 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 please. Can you? Oh, okay. Sorry. So it then looks at those two variables. Mm -hmm. That is to say, the internal value of the currency and the external value of the, of value of the currency, um, which is the inflation and the exchange rate. Um, there is a targeted inflation rate that is usually targeted by monetary authorities. And also there is a targeted exchange rate that the, the, the monetary authorities, where, where they want to see the, the currency trading at. So the difference between that targeted inflation and the targeted exchange rate, the difference between the targeted and where the exchange rate is, and the difference between the targeted inflation and where inflation is, that depending on whether it's a, it's a negative or a positive a difference, it, it gives us an idea as to the level of confidence. Uh, and then the inverse of that is the lack of confidence. So the computation, it takes those factors into account. That is to say, the internal value of the currency and the external value of the currency taking their targeted values into account and where they are trading at. And then you compute the difference, then you do a weighted average to find uh, the, the right uh, quantity of confidence that is associated with that, uh, with that currency. There is a, a formula, a mathematical formula that, uh, that goes with it. Uh, okay. which you I, know, I, 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 hope, to... I hope when we go to analyze uh, the zig currents maybe you will use that uh, index <laughs> uh, if not it's okay. <laughs> yes, but now um we we we, we know that uh, the, the zim dollar uh, it, it died and uh, the currencies which were introduced after the zim dollar also died so maybe if you could explain to us what led to that demise. That's a very simple, uh, 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 that's a simple one, uh, Ms. Sangala. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already touched on the fact that uh, the value of a currency is dependent on the confidence it enjoys from the markets. So, the value of a currency is a function of the level of confidence that it, it enjoys from the markets. So if you see a currency dying, it means the level of confidence has been eroded to zero. If it reaches zero, it means even if you give me that piece of paper, I will say this piece of paper is just uh, occupying space in my pocket. I, I don't need it. I throw it away. So the value of a currency is a function of the level of confidence it enjoys from the markets. If the confidence is eroded, the value of the currency depreciates. It can depreciate to absolute zero, as is what happened with the currencies that we are referring to. But more, more specifically, what tends to kill these currencies is inflation, which once it picks up speed, it becomes hyperinflation. And uh, with inflation, uh, which I previously uh, explained a bit, inflation is caused by the excessive printing of money. Mm -hmm. Inflation is caused by ex the excessive printing of money. So the more you print the money into trillions and billions of, 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 of Zim dollars, that will just uh, cause people to lose confidence in that money. And the money ultimately uh, kicks the proverbial bucket, it dies. Okay, in this case, as you have mentioned, 
two things, that uh, the erosion of confidence and uh, the inflation. In the Zimbabwean context, what happened? And what usually erodes the confidence of that? In the Zim context, what happened was the excessive printing of money by the monetary authorities. That is why inflation went to that horrendous figure of 89.76 trillion percent. I mean, that is 89.7 with 21 zeros. That was the level of inflation. It means they were printing money at that same rate. Mm -hmm. In other words, you are printing billions and billions every hour or every five minutes. Okay, just for interest sake. Then you lived has through there, that. Has oh. there ever been a, a, a country which has reached the 89.7 sextillion percent? Uh, I, doubt, I doubt, I doubt, I uh, doubt, I speak under correction, but I think mm. that is a record. But I know you would recall from your history that uh, in Germany, in Germany, uh, yeah, very much German, the inflation rates, they went into horrendous figures. Uh, in some countries in Eastern Europe, again, we had some episodes of ex uh, Yugoslavia, they went into huge, huge inflations. So, but whether they went into sextillions, it's, 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 a, it's a question that we can look further, but I doubt whether they did. Uh, currently, uh, Venezuela is also going through a lot of a uh, huge inflation. Uh, Argentina, and up until recently, was experiencing some excessive inflation as well. All these inflation episodes are caused by excessive printing of money. There is no voodoo, there is no magic, it's just uh, the printing press that uh, that causes inflation. Okay. Um, you, you, you have spoken about uh, the introduction of the multi current system in Zimbabwe. Um, from what you have said, you say it brought down the inflation to almost 0%. So would we say it was useful? Yes. The multi-currency system, which was introduced in January 2009, was a very positive intervention because we were looking at inflation that had reached that horrendous figure that I made reference to. So with the introduction of the multi-currency system, we saw inflation coming down from 89.7, 6 trillion percent, down to almost 0 percent. And it stayed there for almost four or five years during the lifespan of the multi-currency system. There was a time when Within the Zim financial markets, they were already talking about deflation. Deflation, that's negative inflation. That's inflation, which is now below zero. That means prices are, are actually going down. In other words, you buy a cow now for $1,000. You are forced to sell it for uh, $900. That is an instance of deflation mm. where prices are really, really going down. That is negative inflation. Inflation is now below zero. So there was talk about a possibility of the onset of a deflation. So yes, um, uh, the multi-currency system, the, it, it had the big effect of killing inflation, bringing it down to zero. Then what, 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 hap what happened then? What then happened, this whole thing was then destabilized by the introduction of the bond note, All right. which initially mm -hmm. came as coins, and then within a few months, it mutated into notes, and then uh, the printing started. Do, remember, during the multi-currency era, when it was the US dollar, rand, a pula, euro, pound, the authorities could not print money. That's why inflation stayed at near zero or zero percent because they cannot print money. The moment they introduce the bond note, which is the Zim dollar in disguise, or the yeah. RTGS, all those are printable. When they started printing, then inflation started shooting up at the same rate at which they are printing money. Oh, right. 
All right. Okay. No, no. Thanks very much. That is yeah. Um. What were the implications of the dollarization of the economy? Uh, we've already made reference to the impact of the multi currency mm -hmm. because that was dollarization. Oh. Uh, the main currency of uh, trade during the multi currency was the US dollar, hence the dollar dollarization of the economy. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, all shops were suddenly we saw shops that were previously empty suddenly were full during the multi currency system. Uh, production came back. You began to see Lobel's bread. You began to see um, uh, biscuits. You, you began to see locally produced goods, Coca-Cola, you name them. You, you began to see local beers, a uh, catalyst of dollarization. All these things you would recall during the, uh, the days of hyperinflation up to 2008, all the shops were empty, shelves were empty. So with the onset of dollarization, it marked the return of goods into shops. It means industries began to produce. It means agriculture began to produce. So with dollarization came production, and then the shops were full, hence lower inflation that we, we spoke about. Okay. I think we have briefly spoken about the bonus. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, you yes, spoke yes. about them being printed is having an impact on the inflation. Yep, 100%. Okay. All right. But looking at the bond notes, how were they different from just ordinary notes? The bond notes were not different. Uh, if we, we can just uh, simplify the, the issue of the bond note, mm -hmm. the bond note was just a Zim dollar in disguise. It's a euphemism for a Zim dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Sanzo, as, as we, 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 we said that today, mostly what we would like you to help us with is to analyze this new currency, the Z currency. Uh, could you please give us basic explanation of what the Z currency is? And the, what are its important characteristics and features? Now the Z, thank you, the Z, uh, it's a currency that has just been introduced a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, it's said that, number one, it is linked to gold. Number two, it is also linked to other assets beyond gold. And three, it is also linked to other formal currencies, maybe hard currencies like the US dollar and others. That is currencies that constitute uh, the foreign exchange reserves. So it's a currency that is linked to um, assets like gold and also assets like foreign exchange reserves, right? So let's move away from that and, 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 and look at the mechanics of how it was um, conceived. Mm -hmm. So I did an ind independent calculation of how the ZIG came about. And uh, what I'm happy about is the fact that I reached the same, um, uh, I got the same output when I did an independent calculation of using the variables, some of the variables that they provided. Right, one zig is said to be equal to one milligram of gold. One, one milligram of gold. Now, gold, if you go to your TV screen every day, you see the gold price. The gold price is priced at one fine ounce. The one fine ounce of gold, um, I think a few days ago when I did the calculation, it was $23.86. If my memory serves me right, I can check the figure. 
So one fine ounce of gold was $23.86 US dollars. Now, one zig is equal to one millimeter, uh, sorry, one milligram of gold. Mm -hmm. One fine ounce of gold is equal to 31,100 milligrams of gold. Now, if you take one mil milligram divided by 31, 31,100 milligrams, multiplying that by the price of gold, you get the dollar value of the zig. Mm -hmm. So at one divided by 31,100, multiplied by the gold price of 2386, if my memory serves me right, you will get a figure of 0 0.075. Dollars. 0 0.075. Yeah, 0 0.075. That's what you get. That is the, the US dollar value mm -hmm. of the ZIG mm -hmm. calculated level. Okay. Yes. So, so I've already recounted the uh, the formula. One milligram divided by 31,100 milligrams. Mm -hmm. of gold that make up one fine ounce. We do have the price of a fine ounce. Therefore, one milligram divided by 31,100 times the gold price, you get the, the dollar value of one zig. Now, with the dollar value of the one zig, you can then convert that to the Zim dollar. Now, mm -hmm. if you take your 0 0.075, divide by one dollar, because we know that on the day of the exchange rate, on the day of the the, the conception of the of the, of the of this week, the exchange rate was one is the thirty thousand. That is the value that they use. Now, zero point seven five divided by one dollar times um, times thirty thirty thousand zim dollars. You will get a figure of twenty two fifty. Twenty-two thousand and fifty Zim dollars. Technically, that should be the the value of the zig. But however, the authority in their algorithm then took the twenty-two fifty figure mm. and divided it. And they, they then took thirty thousand and divided by twenty-two fifty. Then they got uh, thirteen uh, point. Um, 3, 3, 13 point, the figure that they got is a result of dividing the 30,000 divided by the Zim dollar uh, component of the um, of the ZIG using that formula, just in simple terms. 0 yeah. 0.75 divided by one dollar times, uh, times the, um, uh, what? 0 0.75 divided by one dollar uh, times um, uh, to times that figure of uh, of 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 thirty thousand, you will get twenty two fifty. That twenty two fifty divided back to thirty thousand, you get thirteen thousand. Uh, one is to thirteen. That is the figure. That... So according to the authorities in Zimbabwe, one z is how much? One zig in in Zim dollar terms is 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 one zig is, is about thirteen. No, no, no. In terms of of US dollar, um, one zig will be in the neighborhood of zero point zero seven five, or if you you reduce your decimals, it will be around about zero point zero eight. Okay. Yeah. So that is the US dollar part. Yeah. That is the US dollar value of the ZIG. Now you want to then uh, convert it to ZIM dollars. So that is the formula that I was that you can use, where you then take that 0 0.075 divided by one dollar times the this the 30,000, which is the exchange rate. Then you will get a figure. They took that figure, mm -hmm. 250, divided it, uh, it took 30,000 divided by the, the 2250 figure, then they got 13. They got 13. So, in other words, there was some some rationality mm -hmm. in reaching the value.
they want yes. some rationality. There is some algorithm that they use. There's some calculation, which yes. as I'm you, I calculated independently and I reached that same figure, right? Having said that, my contention is that yes, there is some rationality. Yes, there is some degree of link with uh, the state assets like gold, it touches on US dollar, it touches on the price of gold, etc. So all these factors went into the formula that eventually give us that one is 13. The question of whether or not there are real assets that back that up is a question for another day, which me and you can discuss in the program. But for now, I would say uh, my opinion is that there was some rationality that went into its calculation and therefore uh, it's it's a currency that is worth supporting and i will tell you why mm -hmm. uh, currencies by their very nature they are products of some compromise mm -hmm. if i look at the botswana currency the botswana currency is algorithm to the imf currencies the sdr at 55% and 45% to the South African rand. Okay. The, the weighted average of those, it gives you the value of the Botswana currency. With a standard deviation, it can vary within a certain uh, threshold, but that is what gives you the Botswana currency as, as things stand. Now, if you look at the euro, the euro, which, which is used by all the 20 something countries in Europe, was the, the euro, the effect was the German mark, the Deutsche mark is the one that was used to formulate the euro mm -hmm. and everybody to, 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 to abide by the, the, the rules around the, the German mark. It, it is the currency that gave birth to the euro. So currencies by their very nature, they are always products of compromise as it were. So because of that, 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 that rationality, my argument is that this, currency uh, this big deserves support as i said in the beginning the value of a currency depends on the confidence that the people give it if the people give it the, uh, the support at one is to 13 um it has the potential of turning their lives around turning the economy around and uh, putting the problems of the past there uh, behind them okay um <clears throat> You 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 said uh, this uh, zig is linked to gold and the other assets and maybe to the U.S. dollar as well. My question is: the Zim dollar, the, the original Zim dollar, and uh, the four notes and uh, whatever is RTGS, were they not linked to anything? The answer is no, they were not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the previous ones were not linked. There was an allegation that the bond note was linked to, uh, it was backed by some USD 200 million from Africa Sim Bank. But when questions were asked as to the whereabouts of that 200 million, it was nowhere to be found. So the answer is there, were, there was no link with any, any currency. Mm -hmm. And so the ZIG, as I said, there is some rationality that went into its making, uh, into its algorithm. There was some rationality. The question as to whether it's really linked or not, it's a question that we can always revisit down the line. We mm -hmm. uh, can always uh, discuss it uh, maybe in our next episode when we do the calculations further. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of uh, rationality using the algorithms, you feel that um, they did well? I, I take into account uh, the, the fact that currencies, I, I mean, the US dollar as it stands today it took Nixon in 1971, he merely threw a stroke of a pen, uh, changed things around where value of the US dollar was dependent on the value of gold. He just picking around and um, dealing to the, the US dollar from gold and made the value of gold to be 
the emerging gold to be valued in, in US dollar terms. So currencies are, are products of some uh, abracadabra, if I were to put it that way. Mm -hmm. Then the outcome of that magic or sophistry, it, it, it all depends on whether the market uh, um, goes with it or they, they, they dispute it. If the market embraces it, here it goes. Okay. All yeah. Right. So um, on that score, that's why I'm saying this week is worth people supporting it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, looking at uh, or comparing ZIG to other currencies in the region, for example, uh, the Botswana Pula, how is it faring? That's a very good question. Um, be because of the fact that the Botswana Pula itself is a product of uh, a link between the IMF SDR currency at 55% and the South African rand at 45%. So the value of the pula it derives from its value from 55% of the SDR currency and 45% of the rand. The weighted average of that makes up the pula. So the pula itself is, a, is an algorithm which is calculated out of this, as I said, with a degree of standard deviation, it can vary a few points up or down, but by and large, it must be guided by that. What is interesting is the fact that as of today, the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Pula is one is 13, 13 point. And the ZIG came out as well, right at its inception, and even through my calculation, mm. at one is to 13 point. So the Pula is 1 is to 13, the ZIG is 1 is to 13. So technically, it means the ZIG and the Pula, they are one to one, if you like. So it's a very good comparison. And then somebody who wants to check the value of the, of the, of the ZIG can use the Pula as it's in synthetic. You can synthetically check the Pula and see how the ZIG is doing. Is the ZIG now weaker than the Pula or is it stronger than the Pula? So you can you can you can check it using the Pula because at inception, as I've said, they are currently both one is 13 to the dollar. The ZIG is one is 13 and the Pula is one is 13. So you can check them henceforth and see which one is, is doing better or which one is, is deteriorating. So the Pula is a very good comparison. It's a good currency, synthetic currency to use to take the, 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 the ZIG. Okay. Um, what are the chances of success of the ZIG currently? Me and you have already discussed, uh, Mr. Babunkala, that yeah. uh, the value of a currency is a function of the confidence it enjoys from the people, from the markets. The markets being consumers, buyers, and sellers. So any currency, whether it's a US dollar, it's a rand, it's a Chinese yuan, or Japanese uh, yen, et cetera, et cetera, all of them, the values attached to them are dependent on the confidence that they, that they get from the markets. Now, the ZIG, the success or failure of the ZIG lies in the hands of the people, of primarily the people of Zimbabwe. If they go into the JJ Rousseau social contract and say, okay, let's put the problems of the past behind and support this currency at 1 is to 13 and, and give it the necessary confidence that it, 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 it deserves, then the, the, the currency can succeed. But if we both lose confidence and we throw our hands up in the air and, 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 and think, then it will fail. Yeah, of course, the, um, um, from, from what you are saying, oh, sorry. The, yeah, yeah. the market authorities have to be responsible. They must not excessively print the, the currency because we've already said that the excessive printing of, of the currency will uh, invariably make it lose value as well. It, it will cause it to lose people's confidence once they excessively print it. So there has to be some 
degree of trust, some responsibility, there has to be accountability, there is has to be some transparency, etc. etc. And these are factors that the monetary authorities, that is the RBZ and the relevant authorities, they, they really have to be seen to be a, a, a scrupulous when it comes to this. Yeah. Um you 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 seem to place uh the pattern of success of these currents on the shoulders of consumers or on the shoulders of the market. Uh, I'm I'm just wondering uh, where do you place the economy? H how does the economy link? Can a currency succeed without the economy succeeding? If you remember, in, in the beginning of our discussion, we said a currency is the lubricant that oils the wheels of the economy. So without a currency, the, you know, the wheels, they fall off, the, the whole locomotive grinds to a halt. That is the economy. The economy can't move. So the currency is the blood, is, is the equivalent of a blood in a, in a biological organism like the body of a human being. The economy is like water. I mean, sorry, the currency is like water. Um, hence, we refer to, 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 to money as liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, so the currency is central to the success of the economy. Okay, all right. Um, you, you, you have said uh, that the Zig currency, from the way it has been conceived and calculated, it seems if people have confidence in it, it might be a success story. Do you think is there any alternative to Zig? Something that could be introduced, which you feel could be better than Zig? Uh, I don't want to prejudge the the Zig. Mm -hmm. I'm just a small fraction of the market myself. <laughs> but um, the history of money in in in, in Zimbabwe shows that. Uh, in the past, when the Rhodesian economy was using the British pound de facto, disguised as a Rhodesian uh, a, a dollar, the economy was thriving. We fast forward to 2009, when they introduced the US dollar uh, anchored multi-currency system. The economy was thriving again. We saw suddenly shops were full, etc. So, the dollarization will always be a, a default position in the event that uh, the ZIG fails. And the ZIG can only fail if the authorities excessively print it. They print day and night, especially at night, under cover of darkness. If they print a lot of it and the markets lose confidence in it, and then inflation, hyperinflation will ravage it and it will uh, die like all other currencies. Then the alternative, the, the only better alternative, will be the US dollar, even though it's got uh, pains of its own, it brings some pains to some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you spoke about the RAND, monetary uh, union, something like that. Um, is it not something that could be an alternative? Uh, the example that I've used for the US dollar or the British pound will still apply to the rand as well. Uh, no, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is, if we decided to join the rand uh, union. But the union. It would do that work. Yes, that would work. But uh, we know that uh, for political reasons. For political and, reasons. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, such. Uh, questions as such, the, the usually cited if, uh, if factors like sovereignty and all of those things and and uh, independence and all, which do not make sense to me 
Because if I look at the whole of Europe, France, mm -hmm. Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, all those countries, they no longer have currencies of their own. They are, those are proud nations. But the French had to do away with the franc, the Dutch, they did away with their Dutch currency, uh, the Belgians, everybody, they came together under one currency. So, you know, questions of uh, uh, saying if you join the rent, therefore sovereignty and all of those things, they they don't mean much really. What about linking uh, the ZIG uh, to the US uh, currency? Doesn't that affect the sovereignty of the country? Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily. Uh, remember, the US dollar is a is an international uh, trading currency for trade. Okay. It was given that status at the 1944 uh, Bretton Woods uh, Peace Conference. So a resolution was taken by countries at a UN, the equivalent of a UN level at the time, okay. to to say the US dollar is an international currency. So that's why China, Russia, Japan, everybody uses the US dollar for international trade. It's because of that. The same applies to gold. Gold was also given the same uh, status. I would have thought that maybe as an alternative, the question which you asked, one could say, why don't we use gold as a currency, uh, as opposed to a gold-backed currency? Because there's a difference between a gold-backed currency mm -hmm. and a gold currency. How, what are the differences and how will that work? Let's say, okay. wouldn't it be too heavy? <laughs> how, how will it work? Okay. Uh, currently, the ZIG is said to be gold backed. Yeah. So it will be a paper currency or coins that supposedly are linked to some gold somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. That is gold backed. But we say to the question of whether that gold is there or not. Me and you will follow it up maybe in our next episode. Yeah. So we pack that. But a gold currency, what it means is that when you walk out of your, 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 your studio, if, if we are using the gold currency, you've got the gold currency in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. It directly has gold. Yeah. as a coin which is made up of pure gold. That is a gold currency. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you want to buy an ox and an ox call cost uh, 10,000 yeah. US dollars, you would need five of, of those coins because currently a fine ounce of gold, which is the size, size of a of a two rand South African uh, coin, if you know the two rand. So the, the, the one ounce is, is, is the size of the two rand, but made up of gold. So you need only five of those. Okay. They'll give you 10,000 Ten thousand US dollars. Mm -hmm. That would be enough to to buy you a, an ox. Mm -hmm. So a gold currency it means you are using gold directly as a currency. You get into the counter, you you pay for your beer or for your for your for your Coca Cola with a coin, a gold coin. Okay. Yeah, it's in your in your back pocket when you sleep. Just like some certain uh, presidents, you put it under your mattress or under the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when you don't want it, you can smelt it and ten use it for your your wedding ring. You yeah. can smelt, it, use it for chain. You can use it for earrings or for gold tooth or anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Um, is there anything you would like to share with us concerning the ZIG currents uh, before we close this session? I would say that um, this ZIG, it provides a new, you know, a new opportunity. Uh, I would say people can give it an opportunity, give it a chance, mm -hmm. give it the necessary support that it, it, it needs. 
maybe it is an opportunity for the country to turn its its its, its circumstances around, and people can look and you know people have really really suffered in the past 20, 30 years, or since 1980, mm -hmm. if I were to put me and you know better, since 1980, the people have, had, have been going through hell. Therefore, it could be a turning point in their monetary history, and uh, uh, I would strongly push that uh, people give you the necessary support. We have nothing to lose. We've already lost everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Gov. We hope that we will monitor how the Zeke currents progresses, then in the near future, we will come back and reassess and reevaluate its progress. Otherwise, thanks very, very much for coming on to Matilda Broadcasting Corporation, the big conversation program. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you, to your so Thank you. See you. Okay, thank you.